family welcome back to the channel want to just send everybody some love and healing vibes out there get your thinking caps on because we're going to jump into some real interesting stuff tonight all right so let's get started so all right i want to talk a little bit more about this egregor they're saying that there's this concept that's a hidden concept that represents a non-physical entity or a thought form that arises from the collective thoughts and emotions of a distinct group of individuals. So if you haven't seen the video before this one, Judas Sakari, I talked a little bit more about it. I'm just going to move on from what I said there, that it's a possibility that because you have a lot of people saying something in our language and that word having a certain meaning, it could be programmed in our subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is way more powerful than the conscious mind. It says, I, I looked up this guy's thing about the subconscious mind. And it's I, I wanted to talk about merging, how to merge the two brains. Because I got really confused when I looked up the word egregor. And it told us that in the Greek, it means wakeful. And I couldn't figure that out. So I was like, what the hell, wakeful? I've never even used that word, but wakeful is supposed to be of a person unable or not needing to sleep. It's talking about merging the conscious and the subconscious mind. And he, this guy talks about how to merge your two brains. Make your subconscious brain think the same thing as your conscious brain. Mm. Well, we definitely got to do some studying into the, lang into the English language. What first woke me up to the fact that what I'm saying out of my mouth is so important is this guy here. I, that took some screenshots from his web, from his videos years ago. Let me show you. His name is Cullen Smith. Now, I'm not vouching for everything this guy says, but his, his work on the English language and showing us the power of the spells and how it's in the words that we're saying. And we might think they mean one thing but this is carefully crafted to make us speak the reality that they want, make us think that what we're saying, like one of the other guys I follow, Seven Bomar, he stopped saying peace because he realized that there's another word for peace that means divided. He says wholeness, he wishes wholeness in the world. And I'm gonna read from the Megillah where, we, where Yahshua and Miriam teach us about what being a co-creator is. And um, that the same way that this is used in the negative, that it can be used for the positive. And that's probably why it's occult and hidden and esoteric is because if we knew these words are being used to program the subconscious mind, and then the subconscious mind is creating the world from these words, English. So he did the etymology on the English word and it's from the Middle English, anguish, right? And then it's from all these old words, Old French, and from the Latin, angusta, angustia. And it means narrowness, difficulty, distress, from angustus, narrow, difficult. Right? So this word English is coming from, so the language we speak is narrow, it's difficult. It came, that's the etymology of the word that we use for our communication, for the language that we speak, you know. It means that we're using a very difficult, a very narrow form of communication. And um, look, it's even from anger, this English. It's Proto-Indo-European, ing, to constrict and cramp up. I hope you guys are following me. But when I first heard this word, y'all, I thought of the Gregorian calendar, getting this picture about how it's got something to do with the calendar that we're following. So I'm going to read now a part from the Megillah that I think, to me, in my opinion, is expounding on this um, concept. Yeah. All right, guys, here we go. So like I said, this is chapter 46, and we're gonna pick it up like verse 29. McDonough asked the next question. She said, Miriam, I have heard you say that we are all co-creators with Jaja. 
and Elohim. What do you mean by that? I think I know the answer, but want to record it for posterity. And perhaps you have an answer beyond that of my own, for how can I be certain without asking? So Miriam replied, You are a spirit in a body-mind, in an ever-changing series of environments, in the great ocean of vibration. Co-creation is everything that you do with your inner magic wand. Co-creation is the soup you brew in your inner cauldron, and it is the effect of that soup on your environment. Co-creation is primarily self-creation, for from the self ripples forth the vibrations that we contribute to our environment. By self-creation, I do not mean that you created your own spirit. I mean that you create your own character. Self-creation is done by your thoughts, words, and deeds after you come into existence as a being. You come into existence as an act of grace according to the creative wish of Jaja. You did nothing to bring yourself into existence as a being. Let the co-creator you now are remain humble before the majesty of Jaja. Even so, once you have come into existence as a being, due to grace, you are then a co-creator of your own destiny. You co-create your own character and circumstances. But your dance is part of the great dance. And the great dancers influence your dance. And from that mix comes co-creation. Our individual dance, while unique, is within the one dance that is universal family, YHWH. Therein is the mystery of the dance of diversity within unity. You are a co-creator. Every being is a co-creator, but not all have that awareness. Wherefore I say, give thanks that you be, but watch what you do. For be and do result in have. I tell you truly, you will have what you be and do. Behold, your co-creation is whatever vibrations you are responsible for causing or contributing to within and around you, within and around. Your around is your environment. If you cause a forest to become a wasteland, that is your act of co-creation and may have increased your worldly treasure but have grown inwardly ugly. If you cause a wasteland to become a forest, you will receive your daily bread and have become beautiful. I say be beautiful. Be a co-creator of beauty. Co-create a beautiful self while you co-create a beautiful environment. Now and forever and yeah, amen. Okay, so yeah, this is the next question. So McDonough asked Yahshua, Lord, behold, in Ethiopia, I playfully asked Miriam to tell us something that is nearly unfathomable. Lord, will you tell us something that is so amazing as to be nearly unfathomable? All right, so we're at verse 68. Yahshua replied, One of countless amazing realities within the mother ovum is that of alternative realities within and around. Alternative realities manifest as the countless spheres of existence within and all around which are wheels within wheels within wheels in infinite variety. Behold, the fertile realm of all potential gives birth to countless actualizations. Those spheres seen with spiritual eyes are truly networks of spirals of vibration that correlate in ways that cause them to come together in a shared group consciousness. That is similar to a large bubble filled with smaller bubbles. Our personal ovum of light is a sphere that consists of the many spirals within us that are tributaries to that ovum. And in that sense, our personal ovum is like an ocean. And that ocean is but a drop in a larger ocean. And the entire ocean is Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. But Jaja and Elohim are the perimeter and the core. For it is the first trinity that is the creative pattern that is demonstrated by the crystal that become the basic building blocks of life. Behold an axiom. Within the macrocosm is the microcosm, and within the microcosm is the image and likeness of the macrocosm. Yea, in the manner that many small mountain streams combine to form one river, even so the spirals within you combine to form one spiral that is your personal ovum of light. And you are one spiral in an infinite ocean of spirals 
some so similar that they resonate with one another and form bonds. Group vibrations are mighty waves that can bring good or evil depending on the nature of the group vibration. The larger the group, the larger the potential wave. Behold, our inner hells or heavens are according to our inner vibrations. Likewise, group heavens are heavenly according to the quality of shared group vibrations. An important aspect of alternative realities within and around is called choosing alternative futures wisely from the inner cauldron of potential. What is so amazing about that practice is that you can create your future by wisely acting in the now. After you have practiced choosing alternate futures wisely from the inner cauldron of potential for a long duration in the internal now, you look at the transformation and exclaim, I am truly amazed. Behold, your decisions in the now select your next experiences and the decisions you make in each next experience create a reality that is an alternative to what you would have experienced had you chosen differently. You experience small shifts in your experience of reality with very small decisions. But a long sequence of consecutive white wizardly choices builds a momentum that leads to the periodic experience of a big shift. All of a sudden, you shift into an alternative reality. The alternative realities that you might live are as yet not actualized, but exist within the realm of all potential. As you walk a magical path of blessedness and ascension according to your wise decisions, you actualize the best of the possibilities and all potential. And the best possibilities are not only good for your overma light, but also for the greater good of others in the cause of divine love. When you are fully aware of that amazing reality by having watched it happen over a long duration, behold, the magic greatly increases. Yeah, it does. I, I like to stop and tell you guys about how this happened to me. Like when I first became vegetarian, I lived in a place where I called it the concrete jungle. It was up on a hill, but there was no grass, no nothing. And I was buying organic now. And um, that stuff is expensive. Well, I started saving the seeds because I was like, I'll just save the seeds. And uh, I had nowhere to plant it, though. You know, I didn't have, I had flower pots. I had flowers in the house, plants in the house and stuff. But... Um, yeah, I just decided to start saving seeds because it was expensive. And I said, I don't know, maybe I'll end up having a whole bunch of organic seeds I could sell or something. I live now where I got, I live on an acre of land and I could plant whatever I want, wherever I want. When I think back and I look where I'm at now, I do feel like if I wouldn't have started saving those seeds when I had nowhere to plant them, I wouldn't have gotten nowhere to plant them. And I tell that story a lot. But after that is when I found the Megilla. I've only found the Megilla now. It's been, it's going on. It's like a good year. I'm still learning it myself. But anyway, so listen, but it says, um, when you are fully aware of that amazing reality by having watched it happen over a long duration, behold, the magic greatly increases. The more love you share, the more love you be. For as you build momentum and ascension, your creativity increases so that your decisions take on a playful joyfulness that result in living in group vibrations that are in harmony with Madhiba. This is the unfolding of our self as love in the context of all good things imaginable in play and work, which makes being of the Christ family, a life of joy, even amidst lower worlds and turmoil. If we make sharing love our chosen ultimate reality, love will reside within us as us. Be love, be wise, but demonstrate the highest wisdom by giving the, giving the final nod to divine love. It is that pairing of the branches of divine wisdom and divine love that gives birth to divine power. For the power that follows the nod of divine wisdom to love is literally the procreative force of creation. And that is the most powerful form of power. It is amazing how infinite 
is the variety of alternative realities you might experience. It is amazing how few people in this world know and act on this information. It is amazing that you can be on one path headed towards painful consequences and by simply changing the quality of your decisions can change course towards a positive alternative reality. Think not that these alternative realities in the countless heavens linked to Madhiva need be boring or somber or without playfulness. The reverse is true. It says the truly powerful are truly playful. They are weavers of joyous co-creation. Buddha says, and after a cycle of life in exalted group consciousness, heavenly realms, they hear the drumbeat of compassion that comes from the cauldron of Jaja, which is the lead drum of the highest magic. I tell you truly, the cauldron of love is not boring. Quite the reverse. This is the same teaching of what this egregor is hitting on to where you could be living in a world of turmoil and still be experienced in heaven within. And that's why it says that heaven is available now. And this is chapter 74, where he said that do not cling to previous beliefs if higher insights are now available. And then it says that the first recommendation of the Lord and the lady to anyone that is not experienced in heaven within is this, repent for heaven is now at hand. Heaven is at hand because it is available now. You see what I'm saying? It's available right now. You don't got to die to get there. Repent any misdeeds and false beliefs that have until now prevented you from experiencing heaven within. Right? That's a belief we were told that heaven is something in the hereafter. Right? That could be a false belief. So we need to get that out of our head and start living in heaven on earth, you know? Then he says this in verse 81 about it. Recognize them, uh, these false beliefs. Recognize them, understand them, say goodbye to them false beliefs and let them go. Behold, it is easier for a fat man on a fat camel to pass through that narrowest part of the trail that leads up to these cliffs. That narrowest part is called the eye of the needle than it is to recognize and discard false beliefs. If it sounds easy to give up your false beliefs, that is because you know not what are the false beliefs that you must give up. Yeah, this is a fire sermon. Um, it's the one on the mount, the, it's, but this is called on the cliffs above En Gedi. He is going in. Truly many will delude themselves believing that they are forgiven disciples of Christ when in truth they have not recognized and repented either their sins or their false beliefs. Because our false beliefs are creating, well, most of our beliefs were not like chosen. They were pressed upon us. So that's why it says it's, it's easier for a fat man on a, on a fat camel to get through the eye of the needle because we don't really have any clue about what the false beliefs are that we have to give up. And it's a lot, just like that. Believing that heaven is hereafter instead of knowing that heaven is at hand right now, because it's within you, because we're connected to the river, to the Nahara Nihara, however you say it right. All right, I'm out of here, guys.